thing that we're going to do is to dive into the meaning of all the vestments that the priest puts on for the Holy Mass. Just kind of to reiterate this fact that everything, everything in the Mass has a meaning to it. Everything has significance, even to the smallest thing that the priest put up, puts on. And one of the smallest things that the priest puts on is this first thing here called the Amos. Now, the Amos has a spiritual meaning and also a very practical meaning. Practical meaning is it allows the priest's neck to be covered. So back in the day, all these old European churches were very, very cold. So the Amos was, in a sense, kind of a little scarf that the priest would put on over his shoulders. It also has a spiritual significance as a priest's helmet from the devil. So the priest, what he would do on is he'd put it over his head like this and ask to be protected from Satan. Right? So when the priest wears this, it's that further significance that he's safe. So he has this little string that he ties in front of him, just like this. It just makes a little loop, just like he's tying his shoe. And you'll notice that when he puts it on, he covers it over his collar just like this. So that what you'll notice is everything is covered when he puts the amice on, right? Just like that. The second thing that the priest will put on is this thing called the alb. Now, alb comes from the Latin word albus, which means white. It's kind of like the character Albus Dumbledore is named Albus because he has a white beard. Very clever, J.K. Rowling. And the alb is a symbol of one's baptism. So I'm going to put it on just like this. Put it over me just like this. Now what you'll notice is you can't really see the bottom if I step back here. But everything uh, in me is covered. You can't see anything that I'm wearing underneath. So for example, the, uh, the amice here underneath covers the collar. And the alb further covers everything that the priest, um, everything underneath the priest. You can't see anything um, what he's wearing underneath. And it's a sign that the priest, in a sense, disappears, right? His humanness disappears, and everything on the outside is a symbol of Christ in some way. So for example, this symbol of Christ here is a symbol of one's baptism. Actually, if anyone wanted to, anyone who is baptized can actually wear an alb into Mass. What we see in the book of Revelation is that our, um, what happens in baptism is that our robes are washed white in the blood of the Lamb. We recognize that baptism actually isn't just um, kind of a cool symbolic thing. And actually what it does is it actually cleanses us. And an alb is a signif is, signifies that cleansing that is given to us in baptism. So we put that on as sort of the base layer. And the most important thing of any Christian is the fact that they are baptized. And that is the case for the priest as well. After that, we have this thing called a cincher. Cincher is a fancy Latin word that means belt. And it's kind of a cool thing. We tie it like this in a whole bunch of these little knots, just so that it's a lot easier to carry around so it's not so long. Um, and you just kind of let it go like that, and it all just releases. The priest puts it over this, and as he does that, they often pray um, in remembrance of their chastity, that priests aren't married, right? That they ask the priest um, that they keep them, them chaste is one of the prayers that we pray. So we put that on like this, and we leave it like this. So the next thing that a priest puts on is the stole, right? And the stole is something that the priest always kisses before he puts it on. Now, why do, we, why do we do this? Because the stole is a symbol of Christ's cross. In fact, the way that the priests used to wear the stole up until the 1960s was always like this. They would always cross it because the stole is a symbol of the cross of Jesus Christ, right? And there's a scene in the Passion of the Christ where Christ kisses or embraces his cross um, before he goes and walks up to Calvary where he is crucified, which is very kind of a strange thing to do if you think about it, because it's kind of like kissing an electric chair if Jesus was crucified 50 years ago. You don't really kiss an instrument of death or torture. But Jesus did that because he realized that the cross was going to be the thing that would bring so much salvation and so much hope to people thousands of years to come. That even though it wasn't a good thing in itself, Jesus Christ sanctifies it and makes it holy because it becomes the means through which Jesus saves us from our sins. So the stole is a symbol of that, that we always remember, that we kiss it, embrace it, realizing that um, the stole, as we know, is something that gives priests authority, right? Now, this authority isn't something we use to lord it over people. It's not something we use to rule people. But it's something we use to serve people in the same way that Jesus used the cross to save us. So it's always something we remember Jesus' cross when, when the priest puts it on and he, he always kisses it. Um, but, but we don't wear a stole like that anymore in the church today. We wear it like this. And we take the cincher to cinch it in place, just like this. Make a couple loops on the outside and let the tassels fall as such. And it's nice and snug and in place. The next thing we put on here is the chasuble. All right, chasuble is from the word kazula, which means little house. So this is a priest's little house. 
kind of looks like a poncho, and essentially is a poncho. You'll notice there are no sleeves on this thing. I can walk around just like this. There are no sleeves on this. So the chasuble is the symbol of the yoke of Christ. Now, it's not an egg yoke we're talking about. We're talking about a different kind of yoke that we can see right here. Now, a yoke is something that two oxen, two beasts of burden, uh, would put around themselves so that the two, yoke, or the two oxen could work together and they could get more work done, in a sense that they were tied together and they did the same work together. And we put this on, we put this over our shoulders, if you will, and the person that we are yoked together with as priests is Christ himself. And we put this on, it's always a remembrance that we're always doing the work that Christ wants us to do, that we're not working on our own power, we're not working on our own authority, but we're doing the work of Christ. As I was saying earlier, um, this is a symbol of mercy. So really, the work that we're doing is being called to be merciful, just like Christ is called to be merciful. That's the kind of work, that's the kind of yoke that we put on to work with Jesus Christ. And really, what you've noticed is none of the clothes that, you've, that I've been wearing can be seen now. Everything has completely disappeared. So that the humanness of the priest, in a sense, disappears. Who he is disappears. Priests, believe it or not, can be mean too, right? We're not always the nicest people sometimes. We always strive to be, but we're always not the nicest person. So when we put this on, you may see us. You may look and say, hey, Father Matt, he's kind of a jerk. But when he puts this on, it's a sign to remember, hey, he's not acting in his own person right now. He's acting in the person of Jesus Christ right now. There's this famous phrase that we say in Latin, in persona Christi, where the priest acts in the person of Jesus Christ himself. And that's what we do when we put on these vestments to say we're not doing our own work. We're doing the work that Jesus calls us to do. The chasuble is also a symbol of the seamless garment that Christ puts on when he's crucified. That it's a seamless garment to remember that this is always a connection to Jesus Christ's cross. That every time we celebrate the Holy Mass, we're celebrating the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ himself. And this garment is a symbol of that as well. Now I'm all ready to Mass, so we will start the beginning procession.